This is the Simulation Football League presented by 8PM Music on the SFL Twitch Network. After a tight loss to their rivals in Denton, the Houston Hyenas are in must-win territory. With only two weeks in the regular season to go, there is no room for error. And they take on the Sioux Falls Sparrows today, here in Week 11. Hello everyone, I'm Tyler Fall. Glad you could join us here in H-Town this afternoon as the Hyenas have their work cut out for them as they look to make it back to the playoffs after missing out a season ago. A win against the slumping Sparrows will go a long way for their ambitions. I'd finally like to bring in my broadcast partner for this afternoon, Nate Hall. Finally, Nate, we finally get to call a game together. What does Houston have to do today to secure the win? They have to use their fullback that they brought in a week nine, Justin Williams. Uh, I got an up close and personal look at this guy last week in the game against Lone Star. He is the real deal. They got to get him the ball either running or passing, but he's going to have a big game today. And those drone shots were provided by Dags Drone Works, editor of photography and videography services in New York State. Find them on Instagram at Dags Drone Works or visit their website at dagsdroneworks.com. And me personally, Nate, I got to take a look at Sioux Falls last week on their ninth consecutive loss in the season. That comes against Arizona. The Sioux Falls Sparrows, this is a uh, this is a far cry from where they were two, even three seasons ago. Yeah, Sioux Falls just having a down year altogether. Uh, coming into this one limping, like you said. Uh, just looking to put on a good showing today against a, uh, a team in Houston that's really trying to get their uh, act together and make a late playoff push in order to get the wild card spot that they're looking for. Sioux Falls in all white, Houston in red and black. And it'll be Sioux Falls to get us started here today on offense after they receive the kick from Houston. As here we go, two weeks left to go, and it week 11 starts now. AJ Levy on the return. He breaks off a tackle at the 27 and falls forward to the 29 yard line and out trots the man under center, the quarterback for the Sparrows, the 12 season veteran, Julian Tyree. Yeah, Julian Tyree uh, has, has had some problems this season, turning the ball over, just looking to get a solid first drive going here for his offense. He leads the league in most interceptions by a quarterback amongst active quarterbacks in the SFLs this season. He'll start off by handing it out off to Colin Hart up the middle, who picks up about two yards. And let's introduce you to the rest of the Sioux Falls Sparrows offensive lineup. The aforementioned Call of Hart plays halfback with Charlemagne Cornelius in front of him at fullback. Gunnar Lewis, Noe Tarazis, and Al Dillapri Sr. alongside K. Marion are the wide receivers. Nathan Fury and Dustin Dusty Wilson make up the men guarding the trenches at center and guard, respectively. Now Tyrese back in the gun, back to his left and right, steps up, swings it out to his left for Cornelius, the fullback, and Cornelius is able to turn up field pick up seven yards before he's eventually brought down by Brody Gulch and that brings up a third and short and third down has not been kind to these Sparrows this season yeah uh, third down they're uh, third and short but it's manageable so we need to just see if they can convert here a uh, good job by Tyree though on that previous play to move around the pocket and give himself a little extra time they convert, converted very few of their attempts last week so far under 50% on the season but this time here on this Third down, the first third down of the ball game. Colin Hart gets the carry and breaks the plane for the first down. Yeah, Colin Hart, the seven-year man for this uh, Sioux Falls Sparrows team, just launches forward, gets that two yards he need to get past the markers and get a new set of downs for this Sioux Falls offense. Tyree is going to go under center, two wide receivers out to his right, along with a tight end to his left and two backs in the backfield. Tyree back to pass, slings it over the middle. That's caught by K. Marion, and he's down after a pickup of two, and that'll give us a chance to introduce you to the Hyena defense. Frank Stackhouse, Julius Maximus, and Chris Joseph are the defensive linemen with Brody Gulch, Alex Perez, and Zed Markov at linebacker. Marco Swift and Ethan Kai make up the corners with Josh Rowe, Mike Jones, and Brady Clark at safety. Now three wideouts for the Sparrows. Hart Alone in the backfield by himself, Tyree under center. His pass over the middle, looking again for Marion, is incomplete. I couldn't tell who that was there in coverage for Houston, but this secondary and linebacker core for Houston has been hungry all season long, and they're just 
looking to pick up where they have left off and trying to right. get good coverage on these wide receivers for Sioux Falls. Combined so far this season, the linebacking core for Houston has 19 pass deflections with Alex Perez leading the way at inside linebacker right there at the middle linebacking spot with 10 on the season. Tyree on third down, fires near side. That's deflected away, incomplete, fantastic coverage by Josh Rowe and the rookie again makes a fantastic play, fourth down. Yeah, the rookie Josh Rowe coming up, making a big play on third down, getting the hand on that ball, knocking it away. And Sioux Falls is going to have to punt it right here to Houston. Rowe has five interceptions on the season, has the most or second most pass deflections on the team, but already has proven himself to be in that talk of being maybe defensive rookie of the year. Punts away from Max Holt for Sioux Falls. Fair catch call for by Greg Corky. And now the Houston Hyenas will have their first possession, and they're led on, onto the field by their rookie quarterback, Dave Burr. Dave Burr, like you said here, uh, rookie season, third-round pick for this Houston offense. Has been having a decent right. season so far this year, um, but he's still growing and learning their system here in Houston, and he's done a good job of leading this offense each and every week. Top 10 in a couple categories. We'll touch on those as we go out through the game. He'll start off on, in the shotgun alongside Warren Murray to his left. Back to pass here on first down. Looking near side. That's nearly intercepted by Jay Ringgold, and it falls incomplete. And here are the rest of the Hyena offensive starters. Warren Murray is the aforementioned tailback alongside Justin Williams at fullback, who, again, had three touchdowns a week ago. Story of the week for the Hyenas. Cal Finnamore, D.R. Sim, and Greg Corky are the wideouts with Randy Pierce and Stephen Walker at tight end. Single back set this time here on second down. Three wide receivers trips near side. And off Murray has a blocker in front, but good containment there from JT Lane. The corner able to come up and take him down for a short gain. And that'll bring up third down. Whenever you call a cornerback's name for a tackle on a running play, it's never a good thing for the defense. It means you're usually letting up between 5 and 10 yards each run, and if Houston gets going early in the run game, it could be a long day for the Sioux Falls defense. That's going to be Axel Raven on the tackle. My apologies. And up Murray this time trying to go upfield, and he gets tackled in the backfield by Raven this time. And it's a quick three and out for the Hyenas. Yeah, Raven was in there. It looks like Nick Fargo was also in there on the tackle to combine. Uh, just couldn't get anywhere going here for Warren Murray on that third down play. Surprised they might have ran it there on third down, but nonetheless, it's fourth and six. And punt is nearly blocked, but it's away from Brian Adams. and It'll be fair cut by A.J. Levy. At the 36, so both drives stall out and end in punts for both sides. And, well, that's the kind of way that Sioux Falls needs to play, especially on defense. Their defense has kept them in games here, Nate. Now can the offense help them out and get some points on the board? Yeah, their defense has been really strong, keeping teams, uh, keeping their team close in games. Their offense just needs to respond. They need to get Colin Hart going in the running game, and they need to get that passing game going with that wide receiver court they have. Nick a look from Houston here on first down. Hand off Colin Hart. Met immediately in the backfield. No gain on the play. That defense, the Hyena Pack, able to get into the backfield quickly. And that is Tyrone, excuse me, not Tyrone Black. That is Julius Simeon in on the stop. Yeah, Julius Simeon, a backup defensive tackle in for a stop to get no gain on that first down play. Two falls, flips the formation, and so does the Hyenas. Hand off hard again, this time toward the near side of the formation. A much better play, only picks up three, but it's forward progress, now setting up a third and seven. Yeah, nice job by Colin Hart to find a hole on that right side of the offensive line, get a good three yards on that second down play, uh, make it a third and manageable. Uh, they still probably look to come out in a passing formation to shotgun, which they are. Uh, they just need to convert here. Four wideouts. Trips near side. Tyree all alone in the gun. All slants pattern. Pass over the middle. That's hauled in by Al Delapree Sr. Good enough for a first down. And that's a play we've seen them run time and time again this season. Sometimes for good success, sometimes for poor success. 
This time, it works out for them, and they convert on third down. Yeah, Al Dillapri Sr. getting a good uh, route on the right side, getting that good first down play to get that catch over uh, to give his team a new set of downs. Great job by Tyree to find his open man there in the secondary. Now from the Houston 48, they'll run with Hart up the middle. He's able to shrug off one tackler before being taken down after a pickup of seven. So a solid run from Hart, and that's not something we've seen all too often this season, but it's good to see him get involved early in this football game. Yeah, it is really good to see him get started. Like we said, he's going to have to play a factor in this offense if these, this team's going to do well in this game. Uh, good job by him to lay a shoulder down, get a few extra yards to get uh, a second and short. And up up the middle this time for the fullback Cornelius and he's in only able to muster a yard to the 40 before being taken down by Alex Perez and it's another third down upcoming for Sioux Falls. Yeah and I just can't believe what kind of hit Alex Perez just laid on that poor fullback that was a stick right there over the middle. Third and short upcoming so far two of three on third down today and off Cornelius again but this time shop stopped up short fourth and one from the 38 maybe a half a yard to go and it's decision time at the Houston 38 yard line it's decision time for them but right. if I were Sioux Falls here I would play field position their defense has been doing good uh well shows you what I know let's see if they actually snap this everyone's stacked in tight in the line for the offense coverage backs off for the defense fourth and short they'll hand off for hard and they'll give it to him on the tackle he was able to swing his body over Ethan Kai, and Sioux Falls converts on fourth down. Wow, what awareness by Hart there to realize he's not down. He swings his body over, gets that extra half yard he needed to get the first down, and boy, what a job by Colin Hart there. Seasoned veteran, he showed it there on that fourth down play. Two falls in business here midway through the first quarter. Tyree finds his man on the far side. That's Gunnar Lewis for a pickup of four. Well, this offense has found something that's working between the run and the pass. Um, this time, Tyree finds Gunnar Lewis on the left side by the sidelines for a good four-yard gain. If they keep getting small chunks of yards as they go down the field, this offense is going to look good uh, if they can keep this up. I could not agree more, Nate. Tyree looks near side this time, finding Tarazis, who does get tapped down after a couple defenders dive over his body. One was able to touch him down, and it's third and short again. Yeah, uh, and another thing that's catching my eye early in this ball game is how much Tyree is spreading the ball around to his different wide receivers. I think all of his wide receivers have had a touch in this game so far, and that's a good sign for this offense. And up up the middle, they convert again. Here on third down, Colin Hart has been leading the way for this offense. Colin Hart, good job just bursting up the middle there on that play. His offensive line just opened up a big enough hole for him to run through it. And don't look now, but Sioux Falls is cooking here on offense on this, on this drive. Now just outside the red zone. Here come the Sparrows from the 21 of Houston. And up Hart again, has a nice little hole, and it's another good pickup of about five yards. And Hart, as you see there at the bottom of your screen, averaging about three and a half yards a carry, which is much better than we saw him run at least a week ago. Yeah, and like I said earlier, if you keep getting chunk plays, four, 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 that equals 12. If you can keep that up, it's going to be a first down each drive. So he just needs to keep up his running. His 10th carry of the ball game, this time only good for a yard, but just in comparison to that game a week ago, he only had eight carries, so he's already have he already has more carries than he had a week ago, and so far it has helped Sioux Falls get down into Houston territory. They're looking to put points up on the board as we approach third and short. Sioux Falls looking to convert. They've done a good job here on third down on this drive. Two of three, handoff, part for another consecutive play. This time dragged down from behind by Brody Gulch for maybe a gain of one, and it's fourth down, and this time they're going to bring out the special teams unit. Brody Gulch there just wasn't fooled by that juke move that Colin Hart tried to put on him. Uh, was able to bring him down after only a one-yard gain. 
a good drive that just stalls out at the end here for Sioux Falls to try a field goal attempt here. This will be a 31-yard try from the left hash by Sammy Prefontaine. Snap spot kick is up, and it's good. And Sioux Falls will take an early lead. It's three to nothing. If you're new to the SFL, the Simulation Football League combines traditional sports, esports, and a role-playing game into one. Team strategies are being executed in real time by our simulations as real-life players compete on the virtual gridiron. For more information about the SFL, visit our website at simulationfl.net. The SFL, we put the fan in fantasy. After that spectacular, composed, long drive of, of 14 plays, now it's Houston's turn to answer. Corky on the return, tries to angle the far side, is taken down at the 27. So after a long drive where, where your offense has been sitting that entire time, Nate, how does Houston respond? On that first drive, it looked like they were trying to go more Warren Murray here uh, in, early in the ball game, trying to get his run going. But they need to get Justin Williams going in this game to continue their sex that they found that last week in their loss to Lone Star. Well, this will be a free play as here on first down. Remember, the line jumps offside. Murray gets the swing pass toward the near side. Excuse me, that's going to be Justin Williams, the fullback. The story of the Hyenas a week ago in that loss to Lone Star. We'll see what Houston decides to go with the free five yards and they'll stay first down, or they'll go with the pass and catch to Williams. Instead, they'll take the penalty. It'll be first and five from a few yards up. Yeah, uh, Houston. Or, uh, yeah, Houston decided to go to gain the extra down with the shorter yardage here on that play. with smarter move, uh, but good, good sign. Almost on cue, they got the ball out to Justin Williams. Let's see if they go back to him on this play. Sioux Falls going to stack the box with eight men in the box to try and counter the heavy set. Williams with the carry. The fullback now getting the bulk load of the carries here on the second drive. And it'll be only good for a yard taken down by Buck Behemoth, who I was impressed with a week ago. And let's meet the rest of the Sparrows defense. Biff Markham, James Kelly, and Buck Behemoth are the defensive linemen with Derek Williams, Axel Raven, Nick Fargo at linebacker. John Barnhart, Terrell Davis are the corners with Jay Ringgold, Nathan Barnett, and A.J. Levy at safety. Handoff this time for Williams again will go nowhere down at the line of scrimmage, and it's third and four upcoming. Two carries in a row for Justin Williams. Um, now that Justin Williams has had a game to be in the league, it looks like the Sioux Falls coaching staff had a lot of tape and came up with a decent game plan on maybe stopping him for this game so far. A couple running plays. Now they'll spread the field. Bunch set near side. Three wide receivers and a tight end out there in the package. Back to pass is Burr. Looking near side on the out route. It will fall incomplete. He was looking for Greg Corky. The coverage was strong. And it's, well, a three and out if you look at it on paper. So two three yep. and outs to begin the game for Houston. Yeah, and, and free safety Nathan Barnett there, third-year man for the Sioux Falls uh, defense. Looks like he got a hand in there maybe to to deflect the ball just a tad. Uh, Looks like that's what might have caused the wide receiver not to get a good beat on that ball as it came out of the quarterback's hand. Hunts on its way from Brian Adams as A.G. Levy will call for the fair catch. And one more quick note on the Houston Ienas, courtesy of our stats man, Dwayne Schindler. There's only been four yards of total offense here for the uh, for the Houston Hyenas so far today. So the Sioux Falls defense is showing showing up today and providing their defense with a little bit of life to breathe. As now here comes their offense, trying to add on to that three point advantage. Three wide receivers offset single back is Colin Hart. Tyree looking, can't find a way out of the pressure, and it's Julius Simeon in on the sack. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. The Sioux Falls Sparrows have a 3-0 lead. And you're watching the Simulation Football League presented by 8 p.m. Music live on Twitch. Be right back.
Welcome back to Houston, Texas. I'm Tyler Falk. He's Nate Hall. Thanks for joining us here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Sioux Falls Sparrows in town trying to break their nine game losing streak as Colin Hart gets the call after the sack on Julian Tyree. And he'll pick up a couple. It'll be third and long coming up. Yeah, it looks like number 66 there for Houston could have got a beat on that tackle in the uh, to line of scrimmage, Frank Stackhouse. But Colin Hart was able to get a good four yard gain to break out of that grasp and uh, bring up a third and long though. Last couple of third downs have been third and short. This one is third and 12. We'll see if they can convert. Tyree looks short over the middle. It's caught, but well short of the marker is Trugan James, and it's a three and out for the Sparrows. So three, both teams trading three and outs, and on comes the punting unit. Yeah, just couldn't get the ball uh, further down the field to one of his uh, wide receivers that might have been past the first down markers. Um Good job to get a few yards, but no, uh, not enough for the first down, so they're going to have to punt. Once away from Max Holt, down for Greg Corky. He'll begin his return near the 27. He'll get taken down at the 34 on a decent little return. And here come the Hyenas. Only two offensive drives and four yards to show for what has been a dismal start for this offense. Both drives going on three and outs. This is drive number three. We'll see if they can improve, Nate. Yeah, let's see if we get a maybe a DR Sim sighting on this drive. We haven't called his name at all in the first quarter. And Burr to, uh, Burr to Sim has been a good connection over the season. I think uh, they need to open it up a little bit. Burr to pass. Looking deep down the far side for DR Sim. And that's hauled in. First down Hyenas and it's an explosive play to get off the snide. Call me Nostradamus, but Burr finds his man that I was just talking about, DR Sim, for a big gain, uh, getting a huge first down uh, to set up a new set of downs here for this Houston offense to break out of their slump that they've been in the first quarter. Just as soon as we get to call his name, Nate, he goes back to the sideline and on comes the power eye formation, the goal line set, and they're going to pass out of it. Screen play over to for Warren Murray. He's able to make a spin and turn up field for a good gain of five yards. Yeah, Warren Murray there. He's so good out in the flats, just uh, gets an extra few yards on that spin cycle. Uh, great job by him to pick up the yards that he could to make it a second and medium for this offense. Wide receivers. Burring in the backfield. Linebackers come up the line. They'll send four. Burr to throw. It's a wobbler over the middle, but it's hauled in for another first down. And inside the red zone go the Hainas. It's Kyle Finnamore on the reception. All right, Kyle Finnamore getting in on the receiving action here with another long reception. Great throw. Great job by Dave Burr. It looks like there were defenders in his face as he let that ball go. Finds his... Receiver Finnamore coming over the middle for a nice gain all the way down inside the red zone. The Hyenas are knocking on the door, only about 14 and a half yards out. Burr in the gun, Murray and Williams to his left and right with three wide receivers. Back to pass, looking over the middle. That's hauled in underneath the coverage by DR Sim, and it's another first down inside the five. Another DR Sim sighting, another reception over the middle. This Houston offense is rolling so far. He's just got to complete this drive. We can't, uh, but Sioux Falls has got to find a way to, to bend, don't break here on this next set of downs. Three big old chunk plays, one for 34, 20 and 11 on the drive. Pitch play, Murray, far side, trying to get outside, but is taken down after maybe picking up a one as he was dragged down from behind by Jay Ringgold. Yeah, Jay, Jay Ringgold there. Looks like James Kelly might have been on the combined tackle in the same area. But good job by this defense to get a tackle for only a one-yard gain to set up a second and goal. I formation, two wide receivers to the right. Burr looks far side to a wide open Murray, and he's going to find his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston, and they take the lead. Wow, wide open out there in the flat was Warren Murray. Noah was out there in coverage for Sioux Falls, and Warren Murray just caught it, and all he had to do was just jog forward a couple of yards and just hits pay dirt for the Houston touchdown to go up here early in the second quarter. 
After back-to-back -back drives that ended in three and outs, the Hyenas find a way down the field and retake and will take the lead for the first time today. And on comes Sonny J on to attempt the extra point to make it a four-point ball game. Snap spot, kick is up and kick is good from Sonny J and it's seven to three, Houston. Are you a Next Level's SFL fan? Visit the SFL League website at simulationfl.net for info on how to create a player and to join our community. Check out League Leaders. We've got stats from all 17 seasons of, of SFL action and track games, season, and career numbers of all the players over time who have gone from pouch to field. The Simulation Football League, 17 seasons strong. Kicks away from Sonny J and A.J. Levy will get his return started from near the five and he's taken down at the 25 and probably some names up on that website of players that are still active. But as we found out this week, two of the long, long time stalwarts in this league, Nate, are officially hanging up their cleats at the end of the season. That being Reggie Streeter and James Hands, Reggie Streeter, the halfback over in Louisiana and James Hands, a member of the Hands Brothers over there in Arizona. Yeah, uh, those two, like you said, decide to hang up the cleats at the end of the season. Uh, good careers by both of them, uh, but good luck to them as they start the next chapter of each of their lives. And as we're talking, it was almost picked off that last pass by Tyree, by Brady Clark. So not the most impressive throw from Tyree. He looked to be in control of the offense on the last drive and try to maybe do a little bit too much after seeing the rookie quarterback throwing a couple bombs. Yeah, and I'm not sure if they're uh, they've, they're shaking a little bit by that quick strike by Houston on the last drive, but they just got to pull it together and keep going uh, to try to keep this drive going. And it'll be a swing pass to get them going in the right direction here on second down for Colin Hart. Clark again in on the play, able to make the tackle on Colin Hart, and it brings up third down. Yeah, Colin Hart there, proving that he can do just as much damage out there in the flat as Warren Murray. Great catch by him to gain a good seven yards on second down to make it a third and short. Strong out to the near side, free play, free first down for Sioux Falls, no matter the outcome of the play. Colin Hart gets stopped short, but due to the offsides, it'll be first down Sioux Falls. Yeah, big break there by Sioux Falls offense, because that run was going nowhere quick and they're going to take this five yard penalty and get the automatic first down call well, from rc2 says that it was frank stackhouse the rookie out of albuquerque that comes up with the infraction and it results in a free first down for the sparrows and another bite at the cherry if you will for their offense as they look to answer the touchdown from houston on their last possession Split backfield, three wide receivers and Tyree under the gun. He's back to pass, short drop, looking outside, finds Tarazis, good enough for four yards. He's taken down right there by Ethan Kai. Good job by this offense so far on this drive, getting the chunk plays that netted them the field goal on that drive earlier in the first quarter. They just got to keep going on these chunk plays, uh, get a good four or five yards each play, and their offense will be set up in nice position. On nickeling and dime as they look underneath again. That one's hauled in by Gunnar Lewis. Good enough for another first down for the Sparrows. Gunnar Lewis finding an opening over the middle for his uh, quarterback Tyree there. Uh, didn't look like there was a defender within a couple of yards of him. Just was an easy pitch and catch for them to launch forward for a first down on that play. Two wide receivers, both of them on the near side of the formation. Single back set, hand off up the middle for Hart, but going nowhere as Frank Stackhouse makes up for the offsides call and takes down Hart in the backfield for a loss of two. Yeah, Frank Stackhouse coming up the huge with a head of steam right up the middle for a big two-yard loss on Colin Hart there. Like you said, he was he was making amends for that earlier offsides call and making a big play out there on first down. Ball flips the formation, and Stackhouse nearly got in the backfield again. This time, Hart able to pick up the lost yardage, and then one more. Good gain of three, but it's 39 upcoming. Yeah, but two plays in a row where Frank Stackhouse just right. comes up the middle unimpeded. I'm not sure who 
has the assignment on him on that offensive line, but they need to get their heads in the game quick. But they do here as Sioux Falls spreads the field with five wide receivers. Tyree to throw, looking near side, and has his man in coverage. Fantastic grab by Lewis, and it's another first down for the Sparrows. Gunner Lewis on the left side by the sidelines, getting a great uh, beat on that ball from Tyree, able to just watch that ball right into his hands over the outstretched arms of the defender. It gets a great first down on this drive to keep this drive alive for this uh, for the Sioux Falls offense. Marco Swift at 6-1 was completely mossed by the 6-5 Gunner Lewis. First down and 10 from the 25. Pass near side. That's Colin Hart. He's going to run up field and get out of the bounds after a pickup of nine as he was knocked aside by Brody Gulch. Looks like it's going to be another free play here, though. Looks like somebody else on that defense dropped across the line early. Uh, see what they do here. This time, the Spirals will decline the penalty and will take the yards given on the little swing pass. It'll bring up second and one. So they they uh, they declined the penalty here, Get uh, take the eight yards that Hart provided them on that uh, swing pass out in the flats. Great job by him to make it a second and short uh, here on this uh Inside the red zone now for the Sioux Falls offense. And the Sparrows capitalized. Last time they were here, they had to settle for a field goal. And a fart up the middle. He's able to pick up the first down and more. Shrugs off a tackler, shrugs off a second tackler, and dives forward to the two-yard line. Fantastic running and ext extremely potent running attack from Sioux Falls. All in heart coming out here on that play with a head of steam. Pushes down that defender, breaks a spin cycle on a second one, and breaks a huge gain all the way down to the two-yard line to make it first and goal. Great, great run by this veteran running back. Knocking on the door of the end zone. Can the Sparrows punch it in? Goal line defense on the field for Houston. Can they hold him here? Hart gets the call. Shifty shakes the defender and is going to find his way into the end zone. Colin Hart is back into the end zone and the Sioux Falls Sparrows will retake the lead. Wow, great job on that drive by Sioux Falls. Great job by Colin Hart to find the hole up the middle. Just takes the handoff and just beats all the defenders. Just gets enough to get across that goal line and get a touchdown for this offense. Great job to cap off this drive and find the end zone by this halfback. Another long drive for the Sparrows. 10 plays, 78 yards, resulting with that two-yard touchdown run from Colin Hart. And the Sioux Falls Sparrows look to make it a three-point lead with the Prefontaine extra point. Snap spot kick is up, and it's through and good. The Sparrows lead 10-7. to seven. The SFL 17th postseason gets underway on Next Level Sports and for the fans Saturday, October 16th, and Sunday, October 17th with wild card round matchups. For the newest SFL participants, the SFLM's minor league, or the SFLM, kicks off its fourth season Friday, October 15th. The SFL's YouTube channel is home to all the minor league action at youtube.com slash simulationfl. To get on the field and into the action, visit the simulationfl.net to create a player today. Looks like that ball might have came out at the very end, but I think he was already down when they got the tackle. Houston will take over with 3.07. Left to go here in the second quarter. Houston down by three. Have plenty of time to get back to the end zone. We'll see how they start the drive here as Burr is back in the gun with Murray and Williams to his left and right and three wide receivers out in the formation. Burr is able to get it off for Murray, but Murray is taken down almost immediately in the backfield. They'll give him forward progress back to the 27, so only a loss of one on the play. Warren Murray was trying to find more room on that outside in the flat reception there, uh, but uh, good field open tackle uh, by the Sioux Falls defense. Uh, just netted him a loss of one yard. Uh, they got to open it up, I think, more with, to their wide receivers here in this passing game. Single back in the backfield is off to the right toward that strong side. Burr looks to the far side. That's Finnamore. And Finnamore turns up field and is going to pick up eight yards on the play. A good chunk play there from Houston. 
as it brings up third down. Yeah, good job by Dave Burr to find uh, Fenimore there on the left side, get a good eight-yard gain. Let's see if Sioux Falls defense, though, could come up with a big stop to keep the momentum here on their side. Houston, one of the best teams on third down so far this season, averaging over 50% as Murray gets the call, and that streak continues as he's able to pick up the first down, down to the Houston 41. And that's going to bring up the two-minute warning here in Houston. The Sioux Falls Ferals have the lead, but Houston has the ball. You're watching the Simulation Football League live here on the SFL Twitch channel, and we'll keep it right here as we've got a good one brewing here in Houston as the Hyenas indeed have the football. Dave Burr, we take a quick look at his stats, under 100 yards passing, but does have that one touchdown so far today. We'll see if he can get his guys back into the red zone and maybe a chance to retake the lead. No true wide receivers out on the field here on this play as he's going to find his tight end. Excuse me, that's going to be his fullback. Williams there on the far side picking up a couple yards. Good job by by the rookie there, week nine signing to get a good two yards there on first down. Uh, looks like he's only got a handful of touches, a handful of yards, though, in this game. I thought they might come out and get him more involved in the running game, but uh, good job by him to get the two yards he could get. I do believe he has two of those carries today there, Nate, so they are trying okay. to get him a little bit involved. Pass over the middle is hauled in. Good enough for a short gain, maybe three yards to DR Sim, but they're five yards short of the sticks. Third down. All right, third and five. I know I said it before, but this Sioux Falls team, this this defense just got to keep it, uh, keep the momentum on their side. They need a big stop here on third down. Uh, maybe get some pressure in this rookie quarterback's face, cause an errant throw. The uh, turnover will be big here. Heard a throw, looking deep down the far side. One-handed grab is called in at the 15-yard line. Down goes Greg Corky. Greg Corky coming up big for this offense. Uh, down the sideline on the left-hand side, Dave Bird just unloads it. And what a one-handed grab by Corky there on the left side to just turn it upfield and get a big gain on, on that play. Caught the defense cheating up short and went long, but that run there on first down will go maybe for a gain of two as Murray was stopped up short. They go back into the hurry up inside the red zone. Bird a throw, looking into the end zone and get intercepted. How did AJ Lee catch that? But it's a clutch play nonetheless, and Sioux Falls has the ball. I thought that ball had eyes for that wide receiver in the end zone. I thought they were going to come away with a score here late in the second quarter, but A.J. Levy had other plans. Comes up big in the end zone for a pick and just nails it down to bring this ball out to the 20-yard line. Great job by A.J. Levy to pick it off and awareness by him to just nail it, to not, uh, not let that go any further behind the 20. In my defense, Nate, it looked to me like Levy had just turned and stuck out his paw and didn't really do much else. So I, I thought it was a little bit more impressive than it actually was. But Levy, again, is, is always making those clutch plays. And so Sioux Falls has the ball. First play from scrimmage goes about two yards. And the clock is now under 30 seconds to go here in the first half. Not a whole lot of hustle from Sioux Falls. Looks like they might be happy here as they come out of passing play, but it looks like they might be happy here to just take the lead into the half. Tyree snaps it with 16 seconds to go. Deep pass, near side, hauled in, and going down the sideline is Gunnar Lewis. He stopped up at the 46, but the clock continues to run. They'll call a timeout with three seconds to go here in the first half. I think uh, they should have called a timeout maybe to give himself an extra play with about 10 or 11 seconds left. Um, Questionable clock management by this uh, Sioux Falls coaching staff, but nonetheless, they'll have one more uh, one more shot here on with three seconds left on first down for a Hail Mary try to maybe extend this lead. A couple of members in the Twitch chat not happy with the clock management, but sometimes they make the decisions those coaches do that we can't understand sometimes. Hail Mary formation for Sioux Falls. One last heave-ho. If they can get it off, pressure coming. Tyree escapes one, escapes two, launches it down the field, up for grabs, and it's tipped out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. And Sioux Falls will head to the locker room with a three-point lead, and that is something that Houston cannot afford, Nate. 
Houston down by three here in this yeah. football game. That's un- that's very surprising. It is very surprising, but we thought they might uh, do a little better here in this game. Uh, we knew that they were fighting for their playoff lives in Houston. Uh, thought they would come out swinging a lot harder than they did there in the first half. But a great job by this Sioux Falls team to keep uh, keep the, the uh, Houston offense off the field as much as possible, limit them to few as few big plays as they had. Yeah, Houston had a few big plays, had a couple to Finnamore and one uh, a couple to uh, a DR Sim, but this Sioux Falls defense has just been doing enough to keep their team in this game. And we see here as Colin Hart gets a big touchdown to take the lead in the second quarter. And it's those long drown out drives that Sioux Falls has been able to capture. Two of them going 10 plays or more, 10 and 14 respectively, while Houston struggled out of the gate with back to back drives ending up in three and outs. And it's been really a tale of two quarters. Houston has finally gotten the ball rolling here in the second quarter, but Sioux Falls, their defense has kept them in this football game. And that's a very good sign for the Sioux Falls Sparrows who haven't had too much to cheer about to, uh, so far this season. Yeah, it really is a good job uh, by the Sioux Falls team uh, to, to keep themselves in this game. Uh, and it looks like uh, they're about ready to start the uh, third quarter here. And we'll be right back after a message from our local sponsors that you're watching the SFL on Twitch. Welcome back to Houston as the Hyenas will get the ball to start off this second half. I'm Tyler Falk. He's Nate Hall. Glad he could join us here for week 11 here on the SFL as Greg Koki's return gets out to the 32. And now Houston on their first drive here in the second half need to be better than their first drive in the first half where they only had a three and out. Yeah, and, and Dave Bird didn't play all that bad in the first half. He did have that late interception to, to Sioux Falls uh, by A.J. Levy in the end zone. But he's completed 10 to 13 passes, good for set, almost 77% of his throws. Shotgun set here on first down. Burr looking deep over the middle. Wide open receiver! How do you leave Randy Pierce that wide open? One play, 68 yards, touchdown, Hyenas! Wow, first play from scrimmage in the third quarter by Dave Burr. He said, yes, I have played good. I played good enough, and I'm going to just... Toss it over the middle to my tight end, Randy Pierce. Wide open. Nobody in the vicinity for this defense. Like you said, how do you leave somebody like that wide open? And he just does the rest himself, Randy Pierce. Turning on the Jets and taking it to the house. Great job by Houston. And now the Hyenas, it's going back and forth between Sioux Falls and Houston. And on comes Sonny J to attempt the extra point. That spot kick is up and it is good from Sonny J and the Hyenas will retake the lead. It's 14 to 10, a very quick drive. Didn't get us much to you know catch our breath or maybe get back into the stands with our hot dogs and pop there, uh, Mr. Nate Hall. Yeah, I think there might've been some fans out there in the concourse still trying to get their hot dog and beer uh, during halftime, uh, but they're gonna come back to their seats, look at the scoreboard and be like, what in the world just happened? And that's how quick it could happen here in this league. 
Curran starts from about the five yard line from AJ Levy is he has a good head of steam, but is sat right there on the grass at the 28 yard line after a pretty decent return. And here come the Sparrows after a you know a pretty quick one play drive from Houston. I'm not necessarily sure that maybe Sioux Falls can answer it as it immediately, but they're gonna need a good drive here to get retake this this uh, lead. Yeah, they're going to need a big drive to move it down the field. One thing they cannot do is just one big play that their defense let up. They, it's not panic time. They have to keep their foot where it's at and uh, just try to move on down the field the way they did in the first half. Four yards on the opening play of the drive for Colin Hart on the ground. Sets up second and six. Yeah, good job by Colin Hart there. He was doing it in the first half. He's now up to 55 total yards on 17 attempts. Getting the ball... Uh, quite a bit here in this game and they're that's gonna have to keep up if they want to keep this uh have a chance here in this game Mark gets the call on this second play of the drive this time only picking up about two yards and it'll bring up third down as it, alex perez was able to bring him down yeah only two yards there up the middle for colin hart this is a big third down for the sioux falls offense let's see if they stick it with hart maybe on a flat uh play out in the flats or maybe try to get one of their big wide receivers out on the edges Quick drop here from Tyree, looks near side, has no way to Razis, and they'll convert on third down. As it, it, I mentioned earlier, Nate, that third down wasn't so good for them this season, but so far today, they have played really good football, and they're converting just over 50%. They're 5 of 9. They'll make it 6 of 10 on third downs today. 60% on third downs. That's usually going to net you a really good game on offense, and it's a great job by them to keep this ball moving. Hart gets the call on first down, picks up three as he's tackled by Perez and Brody Gulch. We know that this Sioux Falls offense has the weapons. They have the veterans. They have to the the power to move the ball. They just more times than not this season have had have haven't had a chance to do so between uh, poor plays and turnovers. But it's a good job by them to prove to the rest of their league that they're here and that they can play ball. Hart able to tiptoe his way through the Tulips, a.k.a. the Houston Hyena defense, and is right there, right close to the sticks, but he's just a couple of inches shy, third down. Yeah, a couple of inches shy, but it was a good game for Colin Hart. He was able to squeeze his, his skinny body, it looked like there in between the two of the big linemen, uh, gained a great, great gain there on second down. Third and short. Hart gets the call, but Frank Stackhouse is in the backfield, and we've seen that way too many times today. Yeah, Frank Stackhouse, it looks like, I think we've seen him a handful of times just come right up into the backfield unimpeded by the offensive line, and that's yet another time that he gets a huge tackle for loss on Colin Hart to set up a fourth down, and this two false team's going to have to give it right back to, to Houston on a punt. Looked like the center, Nathan Furry, just ran right by Stackhouse and allowed him to get into the backfield. As Holt is on to punt it away, it's a high spiraling punt for Greg Corky, who calls for a fair catch at the 21-yard line. Visit the SFL's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash simulationfl for an archive of every game, every draft, every moment you might have missed since the Simulation Football League got its start. In 2013, right. SFL YouTube features the top 10 plays of the week, archive people behind player segments, and all the major milestones in league history. First drive of the game, or first uh, play, went for a big touchdown. Let's see if the Sioux Falls defense settles down a little bit. Quick drop, Sioux Falls sends the blitz, and they'll get to Burr in the backfield. A loss of three on the sack. It's Biff Markham, the defensive end. The... The rookie gets the tackle. Yeah, rookie third round pick, 6'4", 260, gets right up there and sacks the quarterback, Dave Burr, for a three-yard loss. Great job by him to get that sack on that play. And uh, Murray up the middle, able to sneak his way by a couple of defenders. And a quick note for Biff Markham, he did have an assisted sack. But that's his first true sack of his young career. So congratulations to Markham. As on the play, Murray was able to get forward for a good chunk of yards. It'll be third and six now for the Hyenas on their own 25. 
Much set far side of the formation. One right receiver near side. Murray in the backfield and Burr under center. Pitch play here on third and medium is going to go for maybe a yard. Not the brightest play for Houston, and it's another three and out. Yeah, number 32 there, free safety Nathan Barnett with a good open field tackle there on Warren Murray. Uh, only nets him one yard. Uh, good job by this defense to not to, to stay grounded here on this second drive by Houston's offense and make them go three and out. Once away from Adams as Levy gets the return started and is met almost immediately. Good job by him to fall forward to the 44 after the punt. And now here come the Sparrows offense. Can they muster anything? They've been pretty well held in check here in this third quarter. Yeah, but they, they've only had the ball once. They they uh, didn't get very far, but they do start out this drive with good field position here, almost to midfield already after that punt only went a little bit past the uh, midfield marker. So let's see what they do with this good field position. Offset eye here on first down. Hand off Hart toward that side. Has blockers in front of him. Is able to scamper out and gain a whole bunch of yards, maybe almost 16 yards on the play, down to the 40. It looks like the uh, offensive line coach might have had a talk with the offensive line after that last tackle for loss on their last drive because that offensive line did a great job of opening up the left side there for Colin Hart, had a wide open lane to pick up a well enough yards for a first down on that play. Good job by the line to get the yards that they need on that run. Balls come out with a bunch set near side. Tyree in the gun. Back to pass. Looking near side, and it's in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Incomplete. Tyree tried to force that into Noe Tarazas in double coverage. Yeah, Tarazas was just trying to force that. Tyree was trying to force that ball to Tarazas there over the right side, uh, but not a smart throw. There was just too many hyenas in the area. Uh, couldn't get the uh, catch there. It's going to be a second and long. They'll flip the formation on offense. You're on second down. Tyree to throw. Pressure coming. It's a wobbler on the swing pass to Hart as he does complete the reception and only a yard gain after an impressive throw by Tyree as he was being hit. Yeah, Impressive is an understatement because there was a defender in mid-tackle on the sack there in the backfield as Tyree let go of that one. It's a good thing they got one yard because it could have been a five or six yard loss. Okay, for more formation flipped again. Tyree to throw, this time looking far side, wide open. Pin perfect pass by Julian Tyree to Gunnar Lewis. They retake the lead, and it's the first time since week five that Sioux Falls has scored more than 14 points. Don't look now. Julian Tyree is finding his wide receivers instead of the defenders. He stood there in the pocket, finds the wide open Gunnar Lewis on the left side, and Gunnar Lewis just takes the ball into the house to get the Sioux Falls lead up to, sit, up to two points, pinning the extra point late here in the third quarter. A very nice play call and an excellent pass from Julian Tyree. On comes Sammy Prefontaine to attempt the extra point and put him up by three. Snap spot kick is up and it is good. And it's 17 to 14 Sioux Falls with the lead. The SFL 17th regular season reaches the, penalco, the pinnacle of hype next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern on Next Level Sports. The most important games to the playoff picture are on NXT. Watch tomorrow, 4.55 p.m. Eastern on For the Fans when the dates and times of matchups will be officially revealed. Kickoff from Prefontaine is good for Greg Corker, who spins away, has the lead, and here he goes, just the putter to beat, but he's taken down at midfield. He nearly broke at the distance. Wow, that returner gets up. Greg Corky does a little shimmy shake for us there as he gets up from that great return. But what a job by him to set up this offense with absolutely fantastic field position. Almost took it back to the house, but just couldn't beat 
that last man there at midfield. If Mark Wilson, the tight end, blocks Trugan James, the wide receiver that came up with a tackle, we're talking six points for the Hyenas. Instead, we're talking about excellent starting field position for their offense here at midfield. First play is a, is a handoff to Murray toward the left side of the center. Good enough only for a gain of one as Nick Fargo and company were there to meet him. Yeah, only one yard, and we saw the graphic there. So far, Warren Murray only has 22 yards uh, on on eight, seven or eight carries, I believe, but uh, just couldn't get can't get anything going so far in this game, and he needs to do a better job of finding the open lanes if this team wants to get pick up uh, chunk yards also. Or to throw, looking for the out route. That is DR Sim, good enough for a first down. DR Sam with a good uh, first down catch on the right side by the sideline. We haven't called his name much since the first half, uh, but a good job by him to step up like the veteran we all know he is, a uh, Hall of Famer, and uh, picks up a good first down to keep this drive going for this Houston Hyena team. Heard to see our statistician Dwayne Schindler. He's right around 60 yards on the ball game and has four receptions, which leads the team today. This pass is also for DR Sim. Add on to that total after a gain of eight. Yeah, back to back catches. First time he was on the right side. This time he said, I'm just going to go out left and go on the out route and uh, picks up another good gain of eight yards. So he can do it from all over the field. Great job by him to make it second to short. Just over four minutes left to go here in the third quarter of action here from Houston, Texas. Hyena sitting at four and six, need a win out in order to get into the playoffs. Bird, a throw, pressure cover for the outside, and the quarterback goes down. It was excellent pressure from Biff Markham. He now has two sacks on the ball game. What a breakout game for Biff Markham here in this one. The rookie third round pick showing out, showing that he can get his way to the quarterback with his second sack in this game. And what's big about that sack here, Tyler, is that they were in field goal range for Sonny J, but now it's going to be third and long, and that pushes them out of field goal range if they don't gain another yard. As Axel Raven says, you just got biffed. Third and long, bird of throw, pass over the middle. That's caught, and it's a first down for the Hyenas as they're quickly back in field goal range. Partner, as it's Greg Corky with the reception. Greg Corky with a good reception over the middle. Uh, but good job by Dave Burr to find his receiver on a slant route. Uh, realized that his receiver was open down the middle and get enough there for the first down uh, to keep the keep the drive going and to get them well in field goal range now. Now from the 23 of Sioux Falls come the Hyenas. Bump coverage on the outside from the corners. Burr takes a five-step drop. Pressure coming. It's a dump off for Greg Corky, who has room up the left side of the field, and he'll turn up field for a first down, and that's the danger you get when you send the house, Nate. You leave a couple of people wide open, and there was Greg Corky with a nice chunk play. Yeah, and Sioux Falls, like you said, they sent the house, but great job by the offensive line not to allow them to get to the quarterback there, give their quarterback, Bird, there enough time to find his receiver, uh, step up in his throw, and find the receiver to get a first down. Burr over the middle, finds his tight end, Pierce. And it's another good play from the tight end as unfortunately it's the stalwart Nick Fargo who is slow to get up. Yeah, that's a tough break for this Sioux Falls Sparrows defense inside linebacker. Uh, Nick Fargo injured on the play. Looks like he just took a bad fall uh, over the middle trying to get his hands on that uh, ball to maybe deflect it. Uh, Hopefully he's going to be okay and he'll be able to come back in. We'll keep an eye on his uh, condition. He's that leader there. The nine-season vet has spent eight seasons with Sioux Falls and we'll get you an update when they become available. Now, two yards from Pater. Can the Houston Hyenas punch it in? Bump coverage on the outside for the Sparrows. Goal line set. Trying to prevent an easy score. Pitch play. Murray outside. Wide open lane to the to the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Hyenas, and this seesaw battle just keeps going back and forth and back and forth, and the Houston Hyenas retake the lead. 
finally, Warren Murray finds the uh, end zone. Uh, actually, no, he did. He did find the end zone in the first half. I was mistaken uh, on that flat play uh, reception. But good first first rushing touchdown for him. Uh, good job by him to just follow his blockers all the way in to the touchdown to give their uh, give their team the lead right back. On comes Jay to go ahead and set the extra point. As the game going over on FTF, Twitch is nearing its conclusion. Florida with a slim advantage, 27 to 21. Extra point for Sonny J. Meanwhile, here is good, and it's a four-point advantage for the Houston Ienas. And I gotta say, even though Sioux Falls is down, they have looked much better than they have all season. I don't know if it's just because of how they've matched up against Houston, or this is what they've been building toward all week here, uh, Mr. Nate Hall. Yeah, and you said it before this game started. It's been since early in the season for both these teams. For Sioux Falls, it's been since early in the season that they've scored more than 14 points in a game. And it's been uh, early in the season also for this Houston team to score less than 30 points in a game. So we're right there where either either or both sides are doing better or worse, depending on your aspect of, of how they normally have been doing this season. Now can the Sparrows answer? We've seen points come off the board in a hurry. Last two thrives, one by each team, have resulted in touchdowns. We'll see if Sioux Falls can keep up the momentum. Three wide receivers, Tyree to throw. Looking near side, that's hauled in, and turning up field for first down yardage is Noe Tarazis. Yeah, Noe Tarazis, first down catch. Uh, good job by Tyree to sit in the pocket. Uh, Tyree, this game... Uh, just proven that he still has what it takes to, to win games. I mean, he hasn't played his best ball as of late, but he's still proven that he can keep his team in ball games and step up when it matters, uh, when it counts. He's been pretty solid today, completing about 75% of his passes today. And that one is just knocked away by Ethan Kais. He's able to stick his hand in it. The quarterback just came down from playing maybe a deep coverage route and knocked it away from Al Dillapree Sr. Yeah, it looked like uh, Tyree was trying to find Dupree Sr. on an out route there by the sidelines. And Ethan Kai, like you said, just did a good job of getting a beat on where the quarterback's eyes were, uh, make a quick break on that ball, and tip it away to make it incomplete. Art will get the call. A Stackhouse again is in the back tail and is going to take him down for a loss. Frank Stackhouse is having his way with this offensive line. That play on the left side for the running play for Sioux Falls has been feast or famine this ball game. We've seen one or two runs for Hart that went on that left side where the blockers got their man and, and made good blocks. But that time, Frank Stackhouse yet another tackle for loss for this defense. It's hard to believe that's only his third tackle for loss in the ball game. Deep pass, far side, caught! Gunner Lewis! And they... Find the hole in the zone, and they get across midfield. How in the world did Tyree fit that ball over three or four defenders' heads and find his wide receiver on the left side, Gunner Lewis, now well over 100 yards receiving on this ball game. Great job by Tyree of throwing it and finding his big wide receiver there to make a big first down. Last time they threw that ball to Gunnar Lewis resulted in a touchdown. This time Houston was able to contain him for a, only a big game. Now from the 41, Tyree looks for a short out route near side. That's hauled in by Terrazas. That's a pick of a six yards. Yep, uh, Tyree just continuing to spread the ball around, whether it's Lewis, whether it's Terrazas here like it was that time. Uh, just good job by him to spread the wealth to his receivers and, and just keep moving this ball down the field. Uh, still plenty of time here, closing on the end of the third quarter. Uh, way, good way to keep his cool to make these plays. Oh, coming on the pressure again. Guess who? Frank Stackhouse. Frank Stackhouse, have yourself a day, young man. Coming right up the middle for a huge sack. The screenplay was blown up before it could even get set, and Stackhouse comes up with a stack sack. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. So get your forms up and chat. You're watching the SFL on Twitch. And we would like to remind you that 
And the SFL is presented by APM Music. APM Music is unrivaled music to bring your stories to life. Inspiring production with the world's most robust and Casa Refresh music collection, state-of-the-art technology, and world-class customer service. APM Music is the official soundtrack of the Simulation Football League. To explore their library, and it's a big play over the middle, and a touchdown for Supos! They had to bring up Bad Reed and get down into the end zone. It's Noe Tarazes and Supos reclaim the lead. My goodness, Tyler. Tyree able to find 82 there. He uh, Tarazes over the middle. And it looks like Tarazas was dead the rights to that defender to get stopped before the goal line. But he just muscles his way through that tackle to find Pater and give his team the lead again. On comes Sammy Prefontaine to attempt the extra point. And our apologies to APM Music, but uh, the, the game will dictate the game. And if you have some big plays from Noe Tarazas, that'll cut the ad read short as Prefontaine Gets his extra point up and good and will retake a three-point advantage for his ball club. And Nate, I have to say, coming into today, did you expect this kind of offense performance from Sioux Falls? I did not, but uh, in this league, uh, at this point of the season, you have to expect the unexpected. Uh, Sioux Falls in this game, a good week of practice. Good week of preparation by these coaches. Knew what they had to do to keep this game competitive against Houston, who in their own right is trying to get themselves a, a wild card spot for these playoffs coming up. And uh, Dew Falls has just outplayed Houston so far. Orky almost made one go the distance last time he had the putt return. This time, not so lucky as he's knocked down the 28. And on comes the offense as Houston... Now on the back foot, down by three, with plenty of time left to go. Burr, back to pass, looks over the middle, that's caught by Kyle Finamar, and immediately they're right into Houston territory, down to the 49. Kyle Finamar coming up with a big play over the middle. Dave Burr, he's not playing like a rookie right now. He's called cool and collected here in the fourth quarter. His team may be down by three points, but he is going to put the ball where it needs to be for his receivers to come up with a big play almost to midfield. And Burr having a spectacular ball game, right around 275 yards passing and only three incompletions on 20 attempts. Burr looking to throw, making another completion to Kyle Finnamore, and that's seven yards for Kyle. As we get an update on Nick Fargo, he's out for the remainder of this football game, out with an arm injury. That's a huge blow to this Sparrow defense. Yeah, but thankfully, due to SFL doctors, he'll be right back and ready to go next week. But tough break for the Sioux Falls defense uh, to be out for the rest of this game. They'll miss him coming on the stretch. Full line run as Murray tries to escape the ankle tackle by James Kelly, is able to get to the 42, a yard shy of the first down marker. Yeah, that uh, Sioux Falls right. defender there was holding on to, to – uh, uh, his feet, Warren Murray's feet there for dear life to make sure he didn't cross that first down marker. Good job by him to make sure that didn't happen. Offset eye. Only one wide receiver. Stretch play for Murray. He's able to strug out of one, but can't get away from another as he's tackled up at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Briggs Barowski in for the injured Fargo along with Biff Markham comes up with the tackle. Let's go see if they're going to go for it here. It looks like they may here, Tyler. Is it too early or not? We'll see. Well, Sioux Falls went for one on fourth down way back in the first half. Houston going to go for it here. Pass near side, caught by Warren Murray. They convert on fourth down. So both teams today, Nate, have a fourth down conversion on the books. Yeah, and that was big for Houston here because had they given the ball back to Sioux Falls on a stop, uh, the momentum for Sioux Falls could have stayed their way and it, uh, coming late into this ball game, that could have been huge. But great job by Burr to stay cool and collected, find his open uh, Warren Murray on the right side and get that first down. Linebacker shift to the outside as Burr's back to pass, looking over the middle and he finds Kyle Finnamore. Down to the eight yard line go the Hyenas. 
Wow, inside the 10 already. Kyle Finnemore coming up with a couple of big receptions on this drive. Uh, when you've got a receiving core made up of Sam Finnemore and everyone else there on that wide receiving core, uh, Corky also included, it's, it's easy to make a rookie quarterback look so good like he's looking right now. It looked like it was a nice, I almost want to call it a switch play as Finnamore was running that post and the other wide receivers running a corner. It made the corner trail. Davis have to make a decision as Murray gets the call and he's into the end zone. And a, I'm going to use the same exact analogy. It's a seesaw battle in Houston. The Hyenas retake the lead. Back and forth we go. Sioux Falls scores. Houston answers. Warren Murray finds the ball once again in his arms, rumbling up the middle, breaking a tackle, and finding his way in for another touchdown. That's his third one today, second one on the ground. He is coming up big for this Houston offense. The lead for either team has not been more than four points all game. This has been a fantastic ball game. Houston sent out Sonny Jay to attempt the extra point. To make it a four point lead again. Delayed snap, delayed kick, but it's good from Sonny J. And the lead's back out to four. It's 28 24. You won't yeah. want to miss. So, sorry, go ahead, Nate. I was just going to say it's too bad one of these teams has to lose this game because both teams have been playing such good football. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just one great game, one great job after another in this, in this game. And we'll have to see how Sioux Falls responds. I could not agree more as Jay will boot it downfield for A.J. Levy to get his return started from about the four-yard line. Angles it up the middle and is taken down by the pack of Hyena fans team. And here comes the Sioux Falls Sparrow defense as we continue to go back and forth in this football game. Yeah, Sioux Falls coming up here on offense, trying to answer what Houston just did. Uh, trying to answer a score um still most of the fourth quarter left to play they just got to keep playing what the style of play that they've been playing all game very quick drop looking over the middle deflected and incomplete heads up play from the defender brady clark in safety playing center field Yep, Brady Clark there, uh, free safety, coming up big with the batted ball. Sixth season in the league, second with this team. Uh, seasoned veteran making a big play on in the secondary. Now here on second down, only one right receiver out in the package. Strong eye formation toward the near side. And a heart toward that side. He's turned around in the backfield. Loss of one, Brody Colts. Gets in the backfield, and it's third down. And Brody Gulch coming up big with a huge tackle for loss on that play. We haven't called his name much in this game, but he's he shows up when it counts, making a huge one-yard loss and making a third and long difficult here for the Sioux Falls offense. I beg to differ, Nate. He's got eight tackles, which leads his team as the deep pass from Tyree is good. Shrugging off tacklers down the middle of the field is Noe Tarazas. A huge play for Sioux Falls. <laughs> Julian Tyree right there saying, I'll take your tackle for loss and I'll see you a huge pass play to my awesome wide receiver, Noah Tarazas, as he makes a big catch over the middle on the slam pattern and goes across midfield and gets a huge first down to keep this drive alive for Sioux Falls. Over 100 yards on the ball game and that number might just increase with the shootout going on here in this second half of action. Under seven minutes to go now in regulation. And off up the middle for Cornelius, the fullback is good for only about two as he was taken down by Julia, Julius Maximus. Yeah, only a two yard gain for Colin Hart, but a good two yards here. Let's make it second and uh, manageable, uh, staying on schedule with their pass calls. Uh, it's worth noting here that they do not have a contracted kicker, so we'll see if that, that comes into play uh, if their drive stalls out. Another run for Hart. He bounces to the outside. Has a block. He's gone off to the races, and he's going to be dragged down from behind by Ethan Kai at the two. Colin Hart, he said, I don't care we don't have a contracted kicker. We're not going to need him anyways. As he takes that handoff on the left-hand side, 
uh, of his big offensive line, turns on the Jets, and does the rest as he gets all the way down the two-yard line before he's tackled by Ethan Kai. Damon Shat says, my eyes popped out. I would agree with you. Colin Hart nearly had one of his vintage Colin Hart runs, but now we'll get to see whether or not he can punch it in from two yards out. And off Hart, pressure in the backfield. He'll only pick up maybe a half a yard as it was Julius Simeon on the stop after maybe a gain of one. Okay, Tyler, so here we go. It's second and goal for the two-yard line. Uh, they have, in my opinion, they have three plays to get two yards here to go back up uh, and take the lead. I think they keep feeding Colin Hart here. He's been doing work, good work, on this drive. They just need to go back to him. They will up the middle. He gets into the backfield, even with Frank Stackhouse getting in there. Touchdown, Sparrows, and they have the lead again. Colin Hart, young man, make me look smart out here. Getting the handoff, getting the last two yards he needed to cross that goal line and hit pay dirt. Colin Hart with his touchdown, first touchdown of this game. And like we said, Sioux Falls comes back, answers the drive, and retakes the lead. What a game. This has been a spectacular back and forth ball game. One team scores, the other answers. Sioux Falls now to make it a three point game by Prefontaine. Snap spot, the left footed kick is up and good. And Sioux Falls has a three point advantage. And you won't want to miss tomorrow's SFL action on For the Fans, kicking off at 1 p.m. Eastern. Undefeated Baltimore visits 7 2 Queen City in an epic battle between two of the top four teams in the league, followed by two playoff hopefuls from opposite coasts when Portland heads to Atlanta to take on the Swarm. Bonus coverage includes rivalries Carolina, Charleston, and D.C. London. It all comes your way tomorrow on For the Fans. Hey there, Corky. Tyler. I oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, Corky tried to make your return, but it stopped at the 27. I was just going to say, I misspoke on that last touchdown by uh, Colin Hart. It's his second touchdown this game. Thank you uh, to our stat man. Uh, but, uh, yeah, two touchdowns by Colin Hart now. Uh, well over 100 yards rushing by him. Just a great job by him to provide the spark that his offense needs to get the lead back again. Big story of the day for Far is for Sioux Falls as Fargo is out the rest of the game with a broken arm. To answer Eddie Gage's question, comeback route goes nowhere, and that'll be a loss of one as DR Sim probably should have just let that one fly out of his hands. Yeah, he should have. That's that secondary. That cornerback had a beat on where that ball was going as soon as it came out of the hands of Dave Burr. There, uh, unfortunately, uh, there, Dr. Sim catches it and it, it's tackled right away for a one-yard loss. And uh, Murray going nowhere, and the defensive line to plug up the holes rather nicely. No gain on the plays. He's taken down by Derek Williams and James Kelly. Derek Williams, rookie. There's a lot of rookies on this defense, and he's yet another one of them. Second-round pick for this defense. Good job making a stellar tackle for loss and get a third and long for this uh, defense, see if they can make a stop. Big third down from Houston, 12 to go. Burr has time, looks short under the middle. That's caught, and, but only three yards shy of the line to gain. He found TJ Newlands, but it's ultimately short. Fourth down in your own territory. This will be a punt. It will be a punt. And this is uh, this is starting to get late in this fourth quarter. This is almost uh, panic territory for Houston to go for their you know, playing for their playoff lives right now. And the uh, as that was almost blocked, but uh, momentum clearly on the side of Sioux Falls right now. Evie tried to stutter step and stutter step and make someone miss, but he can't go any further. Then the 41-yard line, and so a three-point ball game here in Houston. The defense of the Hyenas has to play strong. They haven't gotten off the field in, if memory serves, three consecutive drives. The last three Sioux Falls drives have resulted in touchdowns. Can they get off the field this time around? Hart with the call is leveled at the 33. Only a gain of two as it's Brody Galtz with the tackle. 
Brody Gulch coming up big for his defense, only allowing a two-yard gain on first down. His ninth tackle of this game, one more, and he'll be in double figures. Good game by him. Uh, but keep feeding Colin Hart. He's been your workhorse all game so far. Just give him the ball, and he'll make it happen. Meanwhile, Florida picks up the victory against Rivals Jacksonville as they look to get a first round by hand off hard again only a pickup of three they'll be third and five on third down coming up big play from the man who's been all over the backfield today frank stackhouse big play by him but this third down is going to be an even bigger play for this defense at this point because you're under three minutes to go now it's crunch time for this defense you got to make a stop in order to have a chance here two falls is 10 of 15 on third down today can they go 11 to 16? And a part of the middle, they're stopped short. The defense for Houston holds strong and awards the special teams coaching staff for putting it away on three and out as they force Sioux Falls to do the very same. Right. Well, the uh, defense for Houston showed up when it mattered, only allowing another two yard gain to make it fourth down. And Sioux Falls is gonna have to punt this one away. Uh, I would take this to the two minute warning, which looks like they are. Two minutes to go. Sioux Falls with the lead. Houston will get the ball on the punt when we come back. You're watching the Simulation Football League on Twitch. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. What's up, everyone? I'm Doug. Uh, oh. What's up, everyone? I'm Doug, running, or, oh my god. I'm Doug Brown, running back, Mud Dogs. That's Potty, Kicker, Dragons. That's Benny Butcher, DT, Dragons. We the Simpot, the late night SFL podcast. Check us out on YouTube and Twitter. It's the SFL Nights with, with AJ Strike. Psst, hey you, over there, stressing out about this two minute warning. Don't worry. Join me every Thursday night at 6 p.m. for SFL Nights with AJ Stryker, where we go over game by game analysis, one on one interviews, and great panelists helping me break down these games every week. Looking forward to bringing you another great podcast next week, but until then, y'all, stay safe, treat each other well. Stryker, out. It's the SFL Nights with, with AJ Stryker. Welcome back to Houston. Two minutes to go in regulation. Houston has to secure the punt. Punts away from Max Holt. Greg Corky will stand about his 40 with the return. He's taken down at the 34. So step one was completed by stopping him on a three and out. Step two completed on special teams by getting a solid return. Now it's all up to the rookie quarterback out of Lexington, Dave Burr with a chance to put Houston back in contention of a wild card slot. Make a break time. Let's see if this rookie has it in him. 
Third round pick, Dave Bird. Back to pass on first down. Over the middle, cut by Randy Pierce. Down to the 49 of Houston. Uh, yeah, rookie uh, rookie makes a nice throw here to Randy Pierce. But here, Tyler, under two minutes, are you surprised at all that they're not uh, going more hurry up? I think at this stage in the game, you're at home. A field goal doesn't hurts you if you take all the time off the clock. So I'm okay with them not doing hurry up just yet. Play action, Burr, deep ball over the middle into coverage, picked up, two balls! It's a clutch play again by AJ Levy, his second pick of the day, and it might just have put the nail in the coffin of Houston playoff chances. Oh my goodness, the hearts are breaking all over H-Town right now. AJ Levy, young man, second pick today, the first one at halftime, uh, right before halftime in the end zone, right when it looked like Houston was about to retake the lead. You come up with a pick, and you do it once again. When Houston needs a score, you come up with another pick. What are you eating, young man? Because I want some of that good game by this young man. It's not over yet. Houston has still has all three timeouts, and here comes the timeout parade as they stop Colin Hart after maybe a gain of one. It's not over yet for the Houston faithful. They still have a chance, but they need to play perfect on defense. They have to play perfect, and one big key, they cannot allow a first down on this drive. If they do that, it might as well be over. Hearts in their mouths for Houston. Every play matters with 112 left to go. Hart gets the call up the middle, taken down after only another gain of one, and Houston call their second of three timeouts. They have one remaining. So here it is, third and eight. Are they gonna give it back to Hart and make them use their last timeout? Or are they gonna try to pass it and get the first down and end Houston's hope right now? Looks like to come down in the passing formation. You're Houston, you want to pick. That way you save that timeout or an incompletion. Tyree, back to pass, looking near side. It's caught by Sioux Falls! Incredible! And Sioux Falls is going to break their nine-game losing streak and send Houston the faithful Ohoy unhappy. And Houston, their playoff dreams are going down the toilet. Oh, what a play. Marco Swift was inches away of coming up with a huge interception, but the receiver had other plans, and he comes away with the ball for a first down. And this game's over, Tyler. Houston's going to go heartbreak city. Here comes victory formation for Sioux Falls. The Sioux Falls Sparrows will just have one more kneel down and they'll pick up an unlikely victory in Houston as the Hyenas will fall to four and seven and almost all of their possibilities are out the window for them getting into the playoffs. The Houston Hyenas with that loss last week to Lone Star and now a loss here to Sioux Falls. I don't have it officially from the Commissioner Cameron Irvine. We might not figure this out until late tonight, but Houston may, in about 20 seconds, may be officially eliminated from playoff contention as it was a spectacular ball game from Sioux Falls all around. A.J. Levy, the story of the day, the savior of the Sioux Falls Sparrows with two timely interceptions, both in two-minute warning drives once in the first quarter or excuse me first half and once in the second half the hyenas fall short to the Sioux Falls Sparrows Nate that was a spectacular ball game what can you tell us about it oh spectacular game so sad it had to end when it did great job by Sioux Falls to come out here with the game plan that they had mixing it up with the pass with Tyree and the run of Colin Hart Julian Tyree ended up with two touchdowns, one pick, 75% completion percentage, 299 passing yards. Colin Hart, 122 yards on 33 carries himself with the two touchdowns of his. But Houston uh, just couldn't get its job done down the stretch. 
if AJ Levy doesn't get the game ball after this one, there is something really wrong. What a game by him. Coming up with two clutch interceptions as we take another look at uh, at the touchdown there uh, by, by Gunnar Lewis. Uh, just a back and forth game all game long. Both sides scoring at will. And Sioux Falls just coming up with the score that they needed and the stops that they needed to come away with the win. We were talking all game about how washed up Sioux Falls might have been after losing so many games in a row. But Sioux Falls came out today like the veterans that they knew they were and showed that they still had left what it takes a left in the tank to get wins in this season. A couple of players that need recognition, especially Frank Stackhouse, especially for Houston. He was the story on defense. He was always in the backfield. He was fantastic. Uh, I'd love, uh, I'd love to see him continue his development. He looks like a good player. For Houston, however, they ultimately fall short. It was two interceptions by Dave Burr, which cost him the ball game. Julian Tyree only threw one interception and then threw this pass to seal it away to Gunnar Lewis in tight coverage. Gunnar Lewis had the height advantage on Marco Swift, and that's your ball game. A three-point victory for Sioux Falls in a game that had never extended more than a four-point advantage for either side. The player of the game, as chosen by the pundits, is Colin Hart. 118 yards on 32 attempts, two rushing touchdowns and 17 passing yards. He had a fantastic day, but it's a true testament to the Sioux Falls Sparrows team that come out with a victory. I've been Tyler Falk alongside Nate Hall and Dwayne Schindler on stats, and of course Cameron Irvine, our commissioner. Thank you all so much for joining us here in Houston. Week 11 continues next on Next Level Sports. We'll catch you over there, but until then, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, ladies and gentlemen.